my physique's looking like today after all the Korean rice cakes. through to half the day and then I'm going to be speaking with my posing coach about our possibly working together and teaming up and my joining her team for next season um, just because uh, it's my coach I'm my co current coach's last client and I'll get into that another day but I'm hella bummed about it but you know potential growth is coming as well that come over for the be there. Anyways, on to Friday and then a weekend. And then I'm more focus on these vlogs. Yeah. Alright, so a staple of my day has been making like a protein dip that's literally just protein and water and PB fit with rice cakes just so I can plan out my meals so that my workout, like my pre-workout meal has the most carbs in it um, and fats and proteins. So I kind of keep things a little lower on the carb side on the meals that are farther out from the workout. Um, it's just so I can prioritize more energy and have more fuel for all the lifts, but rice cake, gloop and then I just spread it like it's a dip or like it's another nut butter because I'm all about it. This is a little more viscous than usual. Before all this, I used to just have straight up peanut butter jelly sandwiches. Improvement season, I'll do that again. Hey, um, so I'm at work right now doing office stuff and looking for music for vlogging. Um, so I've been, I guess I'll take this time to talk a little bit about me and, you know, stuff I'm my page is obviously called vegan beats so is my Instagram I've been vegan for about 16 years <coughs> and and then some um, why did I originally go vegan there are many reasons for this I went vegan well I went vegetarian first after I went on a fishing trip and I was real excited because my friend caught a fish I was like I'm gonna bring this to my mom it's gonna be great and then her father is like, well, if you're gonna eat it, you gotta kill it. And I was just completely, the hell, what? Um, and so he helped me, he put the knife in my hand, held my hand, behead the fish, gut it, scale it. And the whole time that fish was, the head was just, looking at me and I could see its lungs grow expanding and closing and, and I was God, like 10 or 11 um, and I was sobbing and I was covered in its blood and scales and when the job was done I threw the head and the guts into the woods and brought this body to my mom and she ate it, she was so proud, she said it was delicious. And I still felt like a sense of pride because I got something from my mother, but so broken for and guilty for what I had just committed. And so after that, I was more conscious of my meat intake and started doing more vegetarian style of eating. And then I met a guy that I really liked and 
he started telling me about veganism. I wasn't quite as open to it. So I went, when I went vegetarian, my family was like, you better not turn one of those crazy vegans. And well, a year later, <laughs> I did. Um, I worked at a cow farm. So I used to drink a lot of milk and have a lot of dairy products. I had yogurt almost every single day. Um, and I thought, well, I'm, I went to an agricultural college. I thought, why not work on the farm, get a little bit more intimate with cows and, and knowing where my food comes from because I've always wanted to learn about that and the sourcing. My first day at the cow farm, I was alone and there was a breech birth. And so it's like 4.30 in the morning. This sow is on the floor screaming. And you can see the baby cow, it, it was turned around. So I had to go inside of her and turn the calf and pull it out. And I wasn't strong enough. Um, so I had to put chains around its legs and pull it. And it was like, these are two lives on the line now if I don't do anything. It was about an hour, baby was fine, it was okay. And then my boss came and picked up the baby, took it from its mom and then brought it over to the veal docks. And I could just hear her screaming and crying and in so much pain and distress because her baby was taken from her. After that, I was so shaken and then I'm watching later, you know, the cows with their milk are being pushed through the paddocks and like zapped with electric, little electric, I don't know, spears or whatever the hell it is. And I'm just watching these suction cups be attached to their teats and just sucking out this milk from their udders that are just way too large. Mind you, this is a, a farm that claims to be free range and all natural. And they were walking in filth and they were swollen and they were just after that I I couldn't I couldn't eat I couldn't I just couldn't so one the main reason is animals I, I love animals so much um, and they've always been good to me they've always been my friends another reason significant reason is my family's history and health. A lot of my family deals with high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, obesity. I grew up seeing all of my family knocking back pills and medication and being on machines or being wheelchairs or just not able to look at their feet. And I didn't I could see where my life could go if I kept eating the way I was or if I kept eating like they were and you know, or prioritizing things they prioritize. Um, I kind of knew the inevitable path for me. Um, so health being a huge reason as well. And yes, um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I'm rather aware of this. Um, I have been struggling with eating disorder since I was 11. Veganism did not make these disorders. Eating disorders were a part of my life. Um, I've been in recovery for a long time. Veganism really helped me in many ways, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't still be vegan. It's the one thing I've been pretty devoted to since the longest time. Um, so granted with health, I kind of took it in the negative direction poorly. Um, I was very naive. There's so many reasons why. Um, but I figured someone would ask, uh, why am I vegan? <laughs> That's why. Um, so, I mean, I do it for my love for animals, for my health. And because I want to leave, live uh, an ethical life, one that when I, when I pass, there are no, there's no blood on my hands. That I did all that I could to really be the better version of myself day in and day out. And for me personally, 
treating animals with love and care and decency and respect and appreciation is very much a part of that. So now I want to go back and look at music, but or listen to music. That is why I'm vegan, All right? Vlogging. <laughs> All right, heading home. Long day. Whew. This is something that I've just been kind of bouncing around in my head for multiple reasons. I had someone message me with a, a sharing um, a workout, an alternative way to do wide grip lat pull downs, but this person doing it was like jerking up and then using their lower back and their thighs to pull the weight back. Anyways, they were doing a more complex move than necessary. And the person that messaged me was like, this is a great alternative in my opinion. And I replied, oh, this is not something that, you know, I ever give my clients unless they master the basics. To which they replied, why would you do that? You know, well, And then this ties into when people have questions about intra-workout fuel or nutrition timing or meal prepping for the entire week, etc. Master the basics first before you start challenging yourself with more complex things. Don't make things harder than they need to be. Or, again, don't try to jump to steps five through 10 when you can't even master steps one through two or three. Um, I'm going to use my dad as an example. He was diagnosed at, or gave a warning of being pre-diabetic recently. Um, and I just caught up with him last weekend and he is clear. He doesn't have diabetes. He's not on that risky range anymore. I asked him what he did. He's just been a little bit more aware of his portions. He didn't start macro counting or doing flexible dieting or doing keto or anything else. He just worked with what he had and made something realistic and sustainable. And he got, he reached the goal he wanted to meet. That was awesome. I'm so blown away and really proud of him. But where am I going with this? He did it the right way. He worked within his current skill set, made it a little bit challenging, but sustainable and maintainable and realistic for him. And he luckily found success. It's awesome. Before you start getting and in, jumping into plans, if I'm going to go carb cycling, I'm going to go keto, I'm going to intermittent faster, I'm going to do these crazy complex workout sequences. Start with the basics. Do them well. Excel at them. Perfect them. If you are not patient enough or willing to master those basics, you certainly aren't ready to level up yet. There's no crime in that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just before you start doing thrusters, learn how to squat. Before you carb cycle, learn how to reach the appropriate protein for your goals. Or I don't know, eat at a calorically safe space before you start doing anything more complex and necessary. Do the necessary things first. I think I'm saying this a lot because well, I'm thinking about this more because I know I spent years in the gym fapping about, doing the wrong things, mimicking things I saw online or on YouTube, only to realize when I was open to reception that I was doing shit wrong the whole time. And I was setting myself up for failure and setting myself up for a longer duration of wasted time. If I worked within my skill set and what was realistic for me, I'd probably be a lot stronger now. I'd probably have more muscle mass, have higher numbers, coulda, shoulda, woulda. Sharing this now. Ah, before you jump in the deep end, learn how to swim. That's 
my little Friday takeaway. Finally heading home. Rest day and the meeting with Leanne to talk about next season. Should be a fun, fun day and maybe a cycling ride. Before that, this wants to be filled with something delicious. Doing another repeat wrap with some kimchi and squash, the slices. It's gonna be good and some green tea. It's gonna be delectable. Uh, I think it's like 24 carb, um, maybe six fat and 24, 26 protein because there's a little bit of avocado hidden in here. Hey Freya. Hey. <laughs> Alright. I'm sorry I'm not sharing, baby girl. I'm horrible. I share so many of my meals with my kids. Because I want to spread the love. Food is love. Food is love. That's fine. I'm gonna eat you anyways. Oops. Like the ones you used on your popcorn yesterday? Do you know where that is? In my bag. This bag? Are you filming something for yourself and me? Mm hmm. Avocado. Basil, kimchi, cucumber, zooks, lettuce, and then bologna. Is it just like in the box? Not filming. Mm -hmm. Need more chips, though. Forget the channel. I should just do a fun. I'm going to do it. Alright, let's see if this will work. And it worked because I'm Korean. That's where Mukbang started. My people. There's pickles because I need more salt. I wanted more salt. Mm -hmm. Sandwiches were one of the foods I was scared of eating. Um, my eating disorder had me there's so many foods that I was fearful of genuinely fearful of and sandwiches are one of them so it was avocado for really impractical reasons but my I was so sick that I convinced myself to think that these foods would would genuinely hurt me peanut butter as well and I have a very good relationship with peanut butter and bread and avocado now. I'm very glad that I took the time to learn about nutrition and to get out of the comfort zone and explore these foods and trust my coaches because now 
bite more than ever. I'm lean. I'm able, like, I'm able bodied, I'm strong, I lift things. And I, I eat a lot. Misconception about those that suffer from anorexia bulimia. We don't hate food. We love it. We like it. There's something that tells us it's wrong. It's a tough journey to recover. So be patient with those that are taking their time. Support them. Be kind, be loving. It's uh, one hell of a freaking battle to fight. If you're suffering, I assure you, it is worth trudging through the shit to get to recovery. There's so much life to live and love to have. Eating disorders take all of that. They just steal it from you. I'm gonna finish my sandwich off screen because it's gonna get dirty and gross and I really don't wanna film that. Mm -hmm.